In August of 1939, on the eve of Hitler's invasion of Poland, physicist Leo Szilard sent a letter, which was co-signed by Albert Einstein, to United States President Franklin Roosevelt. The letter warned of a possible German nuclear program and encouraged the United States to begin its own nuclear program. Roosevelt heeded the warning and started the Manhattan Project. General Leslie Groves was appointed the military director of the project, and he in turn appointed physicist Robert Oppenheimer as the scientific director of the project. Robert Oppenheimer was a physicist who graduated from Harvard and Cambridge and went on to work at the University of Göttingen. Oppenheimer was invited by Max Born and developed with Born the Born-Oppenheimer approximation, which allows physicists to calculate the wave function of a molecule in only two steps. Oppenheimer also received his PhD at Göttingen, a German university. He later went on to become a professor at the University of California in Berkeley in 1929, by which time he had written 15 papers in quantum physics. Before he joined the Manhattan Project, Oppenheimer studied spectrums, predicted both the positron and the meson, and made discoveries in astrophysics related to black holes and neutron stars. In 1941, during the planning of the Manhattan Project, Oppenheimer was suggested as a possible helper by Ernest Lawrence. Oppenheimer took over neutron calculations for the project. In 1942, Oppenheimer was appointed as the scientific director of the laboratory that would design and build the first atomic bomb. Oppenheimer designated Los Alamos, the place of his choosing, as the site of the new laboratory. Oppenheimer managed to gather thousands of physicists who dealt with the theoretical and mechanical issues within the project. Los Alamos housed the numerous physicists who worked on and helped build the first nuclear bomb, including Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer attempted to keep Los Alamos an academic community of physicists. He was critical in bringing distinguished scientists to Los Alamos, and he was key in managing Los Alamos, almost acting as a mayor. He handled living matters, male censorship, wages, and promotions. Los Alamos studied the fissile elements involved in a nuclear explosion and performed many of the calculations and constructions involved in creating the nuclear bomb, especially the calculation of neutron emissions from both uranium and plutonium. For the most part, Oppenheimer was the head of the neutron calculations before he was appointed the scientific director of the project. The lab eventually discovered that plutonium would emit more neutrons, an important part of a nuclear explosion, than uranium. Consequently, Oppenheimer focused on making sure the necessary facilities at Oak Ridge could produce enough plutonium. Oppenheimer, as well as Lawrence, helped plan the construction of the X-10, Y-12, Clinton, and Oak Ridge facilities that would help produce fissile nuclear elements such as uranium-235 and plutonium-239, which could be used in a nuclear bomb. The X-10 graphite reactor, for example, helped remove plutonium from enriched uranium. Oppenheimer from Los Alamos warned the military in 1943 that three times more fissile material than estimated would be needed for an atomic bomb. Consequently, General Groves approved extensions for the Y-12 facility. Oppenheimer also focused on using implosion as a method for detonation. He helped restructure Los Alamos in 1944 toward producing an implosion bomb. Finally, in 1945, Los Alamos, for the most part, finished the project and created a nuclear bomb. While the atomic bomb was originally planned to rival the Germans' possible nuclear program, Oppenheimer was convinced to finish the program when Germany surrendered. He believed that a nuclear bomb could help end the continuing war in the Pacific. In August of 1945, the Manhattan Project was effectively completed when the first nuclear bomb was raised and detonated in Alamogordo, New Mexico.
The explosion of the bomb, called the gadget, sent the world into the atomic era and shocked many of the scientists involved in the development of the bomb, including Oppenheimer. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that, one way or another. Later in 1945, the United States dropped atomic bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Japan later surrendered. Oppenheimer's work was effectively used to end the Second World War. After the war, Oppenheimer recommended against increased use of the atomic bomb and an arms race. He believed that an arms race between the United States and the Soviet Union would lead to the deaths of millions of people. He was also appointed by President Truman to head a committee within the Atomic Energy Commission. However, President Dwight Eisenhower's administration treated Oppenheimer very differently. During the Great Depression, Oppenheimer supported many left-wing causes in response to the rise of right-wing Nazism. Communism and the ensuing Red Scare caused Oppenheimer to lose his security clearance. In a public hearing, Oppenheimer lost much of his work due to McCarthyism and the Red Square, in which many who were sympathetic to left-wing and communist causes were unfairly singled out and stripped of their positions. Oppenheimer was working to prevent civilian casualties. However, he was accused of attempting to prevent the United States and Edward Teller from building the more powerful hydrogen bomb. In 1963, President Kennedy awarded the Enrico Fermi Award to Oppenheimer, nine years after his security clearance was revoked. President Johnson gave the award to Oppenheimer after Kennedy was shot. The award effectively showed that the accusations of Oppenheimer sympathizing with communism were false. Evidently, Robert Oppenheimer was a critical physicist in the 20th century. He helped develop quantum physics as well as spectroscopy, and he predicted a hadronic subatomic particle and an antimatter subatomic particle. Furthermore, he helped develop nuclear power, both in terms of military weapons as well as energy applications. He also led both Los Alamos and the Manhattan Project, as well as the Atomic Energy Commission. As a result, he helped end the Second World War. However, Oppenheimer also failed in part to prevent a nuclear arms race, which on multiple occasions nearly resulted in a global nuclear war. McCarthyism and the Red Scare may have prevented Oppenheimer from achieving an important goal, the use of nuclear weapons solely in scientific terms. However, Oppenheimer's biggest failure may also have been his biggest accomplishment. While the nuclear weapon itself has a dominant legacy, nuclear weapons act as a deterrent against war between superpowers, like the modern United States, Russia, and China. As a result, Oppenheimer's invention, which on numerous occasions has nearly ended the world, has also saved the world from a potential Third World War. Consequently, Oppenheimer's legacy must be viewed as a mixture of positive and negative points. Nonetheless, Robert Oppenheimer was a massively significant figure in the 20th century.